Beruli ulcers, causative organism and methods of transmission. So Beruli ulcers caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium ulcerans is a devastating chronic condition that primarily affects the skin and occasionally the bones. The organism belongs to the same bacterial family that causes tuberculosis and leprosy, allowing enabling collaboration with disease programs in these areas. So M. ulcerans, on the other hand, is an environmental bacteria that produces a unique toxin called mycolactone, and the mode of human transmission is still unknown. However, early detection and treatment are currently critical for reducing morbidity, costs, and preventing long-term disability. Disease Epidemiology more than 33 countries have reported Beruli ulcers since 2002, and furthermore, 85% of the cases were present in the African region in 2018, and also more than 1,400 new cases have emerged globally in 2020. Here is a figure demonstrating the number of new reported cases of Beruli ulcer per year. Signs and symptoms, a painless swelling nodule, a big painless patch of induration like plaque, or a diffuse painless swelling of the legs, arms, or face, such as an edema, are all common symptoms of a Beruli ulcer. So there may be a little discomfort or fever as the condition progresses. The nodule, plaque, or edema will ulcerate after four weeks if left untreated, or sometimes even during antibiotic treatment, and therefore deformities can occur if the bone is afflicted. To minimize confusion with other causes of ulceration, such as diabetes, arterial and venous insufficiency lesions, healthcare providers should be cautious when diagnosing Beruli ulcers in patients with lower leg lesions. And as for complications, tissue breakdown can be significant and subsequent infection is a possibility. Osteomyelitis and metastatic lesions are two other consequences. Scarring from extensive lesions can result in irreparable deformity, secondary lymphedema, and joint movement restriction. Beruli also causes long-term disability, disfigurement, and a major economical burden in a small number of people. So as for diagnosis, early diagnosis is critical so as to prevent the problem from getting worse, and in most cases, experienced health professionals in endemic areas can make reliable clinical diagnosis, but training is essential. So differential diagnoses of Beruli ulcers can include tropical phagedenic ulcers, chronic lower leg ulcers due to arterial and venous insufficiency, often in elderly populations, diabetic ulcers, cutaneous leishmaniasis, extensive ulcerative yaws and ulcers caused by hemophilus decree. So whirly nodule lesions may be confused with boils, lipomas, ganglions, lymph node tuberculosis, onchocerciasis nodules or deep fungal subcutaneous infections. And in Australia, papular lesions may initially be confused with an insect bite. So just to continue, four standard laboratory methods can be used to confirm Beruli ulcers. There's the IS2404 polymerase chain reaction, direct microscopy, histopathology, and culture. So treatment consists of a combination of antibiotics and complementary treatments. And a recent study suggests that the combination of rifampicin and clarithromycin is now the recommended treatment. And in Australia, a combination of rifampicin and moxifloxacin is routinely used with good results, but its effectiveness has not been proven. So interventions such as wound and lymphedema management and surgery, so mainly debridement and skin grafting, are used to speed up healing, thereby shortening the duration of hospitalization. Physiotherapy is needed in severe cases to prevent disability, so those left with a disability often require long-term rehabilitation. And these same interventions are applicable to other neglected tropical diseases such as leprosy and lymphatic filiosis. So moving on to prevention and control, there's currently no primary preventive methods for Beruli ulcer and it's not clear whether there is a way to prevent Beruli ulcers. However, health authorities advise as a precaution the people in affected areas, number one, wear gloves and protective clothing when gardening, two, clean cuts and grazes promptly, and three, wash skin that comes into contact with stagnant water. So the mode of transmission is not exactly known. So Bacillus colmeguerin BCG vaccination appears to provide limited protection. 
and the objective of Burley Ulcer Control is to minimize the suffering, disabilities, and socioeconomic burden. Early detection and antibiotic treatment are the cornerstones of the control strategy.